lovies, I'm Miss Megan, and today we're gonna hear the end of the story of Noah and the Ark. Did God forget to keep his promise to Noah? No, of course not. God said he would keep Noah and his family safe from the flood, and he did. God keeps his promises. Can you say that with me? God keeps his promises. You know what, I think we should call our special friend. What's his name? That's right, it's Cubby Bear. Will you call him with me? Let's call him on the count of three. One, two, three. Cubby! <gasps> Hi, Cubby. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Cubby. It's nice to see you every time. Thanks for joining us today, Cubby. <laughs> Cubby, did you bring us a clue today? You did. Look at all of these beautiful colors. Cubby. Wow, we've got some markers here. I see we've got pink and red. Do you have a favorite cubby, color, Cubby? Do you, do you think it's blue because of your vest? Yes, oh, blue is such a nice color, yes. I like the color green and red and purple. Yes, those are all of my favorite colors, but blue's a really nice color too. <laughs> you know what? I think that these beautiful colors are a clue to our story today. Before we hear it though, let's sing our cubby song together. Cubby! with Noah because Noah obeyed God. So God called on Noah to build an ark, a big boat, to keep Noah and his family and two of every kind of animal safe. And what was God gonna keep them safe from? You're right, all of that rain. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and the water rose higher and higher and the only safe place was on the ark. God kept Noah and his family safe just like he promised because God keeps his promises. Let's watch this to hear the rest of the story. Noah and his family were safe inside the ark. They kept all the raindrops out. Outside, the waves crashed and the storm, and the storm thundered. Everything was destroyed. Do you see all the mess? But inside the ark, Noah, his family, and the animals stayed cozy and dry. I wonder what it would have been like living on the ark. What sound would you hear? It probably would have been pretty loud and smelly. Finally, after 40 long days, the rain stopped but the earth was still covered with water, so God sent a strong wind to drop up the water. Noah and his family waited, and each day the water went down, down, down. One, one day the ark floated to a stop. It rested right on top of the mountains of Ararat. Noah couldn't tell how dry the land was, so he opened a window and sent out a raven to look for dry land. The raven flew here and there and all around, but the raven didn't find any dry land. So Noah sent out a dove. The dove flew here and there and all around. Then the dove flew back to the ark. She didn't find any dry land. Seven days later, Noah sent out the dove again. She flew here and there and all around. Then she flew back to the ark, but this time something was different. In her beak was a fresh olive leaf. Leaves grow on trees and trees grow on land. The land, the land was drying up. Seven days later, Noah sent out 
the dove, again, she flew here and there and all around. And this time, the dove didn't come back. She had found a dry spot to build her nest. When the land was all dry and not a single pot was left, God said, come out. Out came all of Noah's family and then the animals. Noah built a special place to worship the Lord, called an altar. Noah thanked God for keeping his family safe from the flood, just as God promised. And then God made a new promise, but this promise was not just for Noah, it is for all people and animals, including you and me. God promised he would never again send a flood to destroy the whole earth and all the living things on it. He sent a beautiful rainbow in the clouds as a reminder of that promise. And now we're gonna make a rainbow. I've used some of my favorite colors on here. And I'm just gonna add a few more bits of color, like this. And there we go. And now we're gonna spray some water on the colors. And look at that. Whoa, God created so many beautiful colors. And that, that amazing creation is always a reminder to God's people that He will keep His promises. That is an amazing story. And what an amazing reminder of the promise God made, not only to Noah, but to us too. A rainbow is a sign of the promise God made. And we know that God keeps His promises. That's what our verse says this week, and it's found in God's special book, the Bible. Genesis 9, 13 says, I, God, have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When we say the word rainbow, I want you to draw a rainbow in the air like this. And when we say the word covenant, I want you to put your hands over your heart. And you know what, that's a big word, covenant. The word covenant is the Bible's way of saying promise, and a promise is something very special. And finally, when we say the word earth, I want you to start your hands up high and bring them down and around as if we're making the whole earth, okay? Let's say that all together. I, God, have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Genesis 9, 13. Let's say it again, okay? I, God, have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Genesis 9, 13. God sees the rainbow in the clouds, and He will always remember His promise to us. God has not sent another flood to destroy the whole earth. God keeps His promises, and God is faithful. Let's pray and thank God for keeping His promises. Dear God, thank you that you keep your promises and that you keep us safe. Thank you for the beautiful rainbow in the sky to remind us that you keep your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day, Cubbies, and I'll see you next time. Bye.